This is Nick Nielsen, Mad Scientist of Muscle, and what I've got for you today here is something that will build strength out of the bottom of the squat and build power out of the bottom of the squat very effectively. However, it is completely backwards to what you might think would be actually effective, but I'll explain exactly why it is effective. Now, if you're familiar with the concept of weight releasers, this is when basically you have something hanging from the end of the bar, uh, basically a physical extra bit of weight hanging from the bar, you lower the bar down, when you get to a certain level, that hits the ground, tips over, and releases the weight. So you can use you know, an extra 90 pounds on here, come down to the bottom, release the weight, power out of the bottom with almost 100 pounds less on the bar. So that improves muscle activation, increases drive out of the bottom of the squat. Now, if you don't have weight releasers, <laughs> you can try this. If you've got a pair of bands, I'm using a pair of medium to small blue bands here, uh, which is about the most that I think is useful for this. These are weight increaser squats. It sounds completely backwards, but when you're doing it, what you're going to do is grip the bar just as you normally would. You're actually going to hold these bands in two fingers. As you come down into the bottom of the squat, it's like a reverse band squat. Now, as you come down, when you get to that bottom position, you are going to release those two fingers, just the index finger and the third finger. You want to keep thumb, fourth finger, and pinky on the bar in order to keep a decent grip on the bar, you're going to, boom, release both of those bands at the same time, which immediately adds resistance in that very bottom position, which is an emergency um, action on the body. So if you can imagine, you're coming down into the bottom as a reverse band, so you're actually getting resistance taken up from the band at the bottom. Then you release those bands, and where does that resistance go? Boom, right on your body instantly at the bottom of the squat. In order to then not get buried in that squat, you have to drive as hard as you can back up to the top position. This gives you massive muscle activation in your quads and your glutes, um, even your hamstrings to some degree as well. Like I said, this is a total emergency response. It's like a stretch response, the myopatic reflex really teaches your body to activate as many muscle fibers as possible instantly because you risk getting buried under the squat. Now, with that in mind, you don't want to use super heavy weight for this one. Um, I've got 275 on here. What you want to do is use a weight that you actually could squat, probably for about six to eight reps. Um, you know, basically gauge it as you're going, but you want something that you can absolutely squat. You want to do this in the rack so that if you do get to the point where you can't get the weight up, you just set it down on the rails. Uh, you will need a rack for this that has the ability to hitch bands onto. So like I said, We've got a couple of blue bands on here, and I'll show you what it looks like. But again, key point, grip that band with just these two fingers. Use these three fingers for gripping onto the bar. And you're going to reset the bar on the rack on every single rep because you'll need to in order to reset the bands. So you can see I've got the two fingers on here. The other three fingers are gripping on the bar. So normally a weight that you could do fairly easily suddenly becomes a lot harder because the weight goes from lighter to instantly heavier. And you want to repeat this for between three to six reps. Now, what you'll notice here sometimes when you're bringing the bar back to re-rack, the band can kind of get trapped on there. Just keep uh, cognizant of that as you're doing it. Not that hard to fix though.
right, so that's what it looks like. Now, clearly, this one seems like it's backwards to what should be effective. Normally, you want to load the negative heavier and be lighter on the positive than the concentric. Now, because you're doing it the opposite way, you're really activating a tremendous amount of muscle fibers out of that bottom position, which is exactly where we want to build strength. So, basically, as you go to doing regular squats with this, that strength that you've developed is very specific. Like, for example, I have 275 on the bar. Without the bands, come down into the bottom. If your body is used to activating all those muscle fibers instantly out of the bottom because you've been training with this method, it's going to be used to uh, going to be used to activating all the quads, the glutes, everything all at once, getting out of the hole with more power. So, um, another key point here, besides the gripping that band with two fingers and gripping the bar with three fingers, you want to make sure the moment you release those bands, you do that simultaneously. Uh, clearly you don't want to be, you know, going tipping the bar like that, but you want to be ready for that increase in load and you want to be ready to drive out of that bottom position. So you're not releasing and then holding that position. You're releasing and immediately trying to explode out of that bottom position and powering your way all the way up to the top, uh, similar to a cat technique, which is compensatory acceleration training. So really drive all the way up to the top as hard and as fast as you can, re-rack the bar, reset, and do it again for three to six reps. It's a fantastic way to get muscle activation and really train your nervous system to be stronger out of the bottom of the hole with the squat. Now, one thing I have experienced when I'm doing this is as I'm re-racking the bar on here, this band sometimes get pushed, gets pushed in and gets caught underneath the bar when you're racking it down. Now, a very simple way to undo this is go to the end of the bar here, get your shoulder underneath that fat end of the bar and just stand up. Then you can just uh, release the band, very simple. Set it back down and you're done. Now, because you're outside, basically the weight and the pivot is over there, it makes it really easy to do this. It's actually not hard at all and won't hurt your shoulder because this is a fat end of the bar. A very simple, very quick and easy way to dislodge a band that gets pinned underneath.